Mother Dondon, it is with deep pride and honor to present to you the Wall of Remembrance of the Liberators Guerrilla of Mother Dondon Committee. Palakpakan po natin ang kagitingan ipinalas, pinamalas ng ating mga Liberators Guerrilla. May kita nyo po dyan ang mga pangalan na masusing siniya, sinaliksik na isa na po natin kasama dito na manunulat. Kinuha pa po ang mga detalye sa National Archives and Records Administration sa Maryland, USA to attest the veracity of the facts na ito, ito na po, ang mga pangalan na sa Wall of Remembrance sa ay malagang nakikaglaban at malaki ang ambal para sa liberation natin ng panahon ng World War. Muli, palakpakan po natin ang kagitingan ng ating liberators here. Uh, pwede po kayo magpasyal dito sa plaza, mga kababayan. We also like to acknowledge the Kita effort natin. made by the Honorable SD Member Regan Gulapa. Dahil siya po talaga okay. ang nagpursige, siya ang nagmanap, nakipag-coordinate with Dr. Calairo, with, with Ma'am Marie Valiejo, para po may isang katuparan. At noon nga po, 2018, if you're not mistaken, na parang po ng proklamasyon si Pangulong Duterte. Declaring May 8 a special working holiday para po sa ating mga liberators. Maraming maraming salamat po. Maaari na po tayo po po. Bayan, ngayon marinig po natin ang maiksing mensahe mula sa ating ama na nagsilbi ng tapat at may kahusayan. Ang ama na ang unang inisip ay ang laging kapakanaan ng bayan ng Marugundon. Sa loob ng siyang na taon, hindi na natin kailangan ng pruweba dahil nakikita na mismo ng ating mga mata at batid ko naramdaman ng bawat isa ang sinsero at ang tunay na debosyon niya pagdating sa serbisyo publiko. Palakpakan po natin ang ating kagalang-galang na Mayor Reynaldo Anglo Rindo. Sa makabuluhan at takilang araw sa ating Kapapayan, anong lalo na po sa mga kaanak ng mga gerilya natin na nagkunyagi, nakipaglaban sa mga mananako. Magandang umaga rin po kay Vice Mayor Aaron Ilagan. Ganon din po kay Dr. Emmanuel Calayero, isang kapatid ko po yan. Tara ko Kay Cuero din advice, kay Ma'am Marie Vallejo, magandang umaga rin po, kay Ma'am Marie Vallejo, author of Battle of the Sea, na nanggaling pa sa Amerika, para lang subay pa yan ang pagbubukas ng mga listahan ng ating liberator sa Marcundon. Ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong lahat, lalong-lalo na po kay Kursyal Rigan Gulapa. Matagal po nga ngayon sa isa-isa niya. Para mais ay katuparo nito. Yan po po palagay lang po ng marmol na yan para sa pangalan ng liberator kaming dalawa o kung pumupit niya. Para masaksihan ng mga kaanak ng ating mga veterano o liberator na buhan natin sa pamaligitan ng mga tao ito. Ako po ay magpapasalamat sa inyo lahat na pinagkatiwala niyo sa akin ang mga natibayan sa loob ng siyam na taon para kayo 
paglingkuran ng tapat at wala pag-iimbot sa ating bayan. Isang magandang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. At napakaraming salamat sa mga kailangan. Maraming salamat po, Mayor Ray. Eh, Rilio, ngayon naman po, isa pa rin po mensahe ang atang marinig mula sa Presidente ng Cavite Historical Society, Representative po ni Prime Minister Cesar Dirata, Commissioner National Historical Commission of the Philippines, palapagan po natin, Dr. Emmanuel F. Calayo. Sa ating pong uh, minamahal na punong bayan, uh, Reynaldo Rillo, sa kuyang po, ang kuyang. Sa ating pong uh, Vice Mayor Elect, Bernie Ilagan. Sa ating pong uh, bisita, uh, Ms. Marie Vallejo at kanyang kaanak. Sa ating mga konsyahan. Sa, of course, kay uh, Consi Regan Gulapa, no, uh, na siyang... Uh, pasimuno ng pag pagdokumento no uh, dito ng mga kasi masaysayang lugar ng uh, Maragondon sa ating pong mga kaanak ng ating mga veterano ano sa ating mga <laughs> <ngayon, laughs> uh, ito pong nagagalap ngayon na unveiling no uh, at may balkan ka tayo rito at meron pang mural kanina na nagkaroon ng ribbon cut ito po ay konkretong uh, gawain na ang kasalukuyan ang pag-asa ng nakaraan. Sapagkat kung hindi kikilos ang kasalukuyan, paano kaya ang mangyayari sa nakaraan? Meron pong dalawang depedisyon ang nakaraan o ang history. Ang isa yung nakalipas na. Yan po yung kasaysayan. Pero yung meron pang isang depedisyon. Kung Paano binibigyan ang interpretasyon ng kasalukuyan ang nakaraan? Ito pong nakikita natin ngayon ay pagpapahalaga ng kasalukuyan sa nakaraan. Ang nakaraan ay nakalipas na yan. No? Pero kung walang bubuhay dyan ngayong kasalukuyan, sila po ay bababaon na sa limot. Na parang walang nangyayari. No? hindi sila na dokumento. Kinakailangan madokumento ito. No? At uh, yan po ang napakalagang gawain na ginawa ng ating punong bayang Leo Rilio at ni uh, uh, Consi Regan uh, Gulapa. No? Na pinahalagahan po nila yan, sampu ng sanggunian na lahat ng ating uh, lingkod bayan upang mailagay itong mural na ito. Kaya napakahalaga po ng pakikialam ni nating lahat No, sa, sa ating kasaysayan. Kasi, ano, na, ano naman ang role nitong mga mural na ito? Ang mural, mural na ito ay magpa, magpapaalala naman sa hinaharap sa ating mga uh, anak, sa ating mga apo, no? na wala pa sila ngayon, pero nandyan na yan, dadaanan din nila yan. Kaya importante po yung pakikialam ng kasalukuyan. At uh, nais ko rin pong batiin ang uh, nagawa ng ating bisita, Ms. Marie Vallejo, na nagpahalaga sa ikalawang digmaang pandaigdig at subulat pa ng aklat no, para maitanyag ang iba't ibang uh, pangyayari, hindi lamang dito sa Cavite, kundi sa ibang lugar pa man din. Alam po natin ang Cavite ay napakamakasaysayan dahil sa hibagsika ng mga Riego de Dios na halito, di ba? Nanguna sa Lapicente, Mariano, Emiliano, no? Ang dami po, no? Nasa kabila, nasa kabila yung kanilang uh, monumento, no? Uh, pero, ang National Historical Commission of the Philippines po, sa, sa aking obserbasyon sa ngayon, hindi pa ganun karami yung mga marker o pagpapahalaga na binibigay sa World War II, no? Meron po ako lobas na libro, no, itong uh, historical markers in Cavite, but pinakamarami pa rin ang uh, tungkol sa himagsikan. Pero huwag po natin kakalitan na noong World War II ay napakalaki din ang gampani ng uh, Cavite. No? 
Uh, kanina lang sa naik, doon sa rotonda, pagdaan, no, parang baliwala lang yung isang postero, no? yung isang uh, parang uh, uh, andun, parang tower sa gitna. No? Napa, yung po yung ibang gerila naman yun, taparang sa gerila yan. Pero hindi yun napapansin. No? Kasi, kinakailangan magkakaroon ng commemoration. Kinakailangan magkakaroon ng pagpapahalaga. Kasi kung hindi, dadaan-daanan lang po ang mga marker natin at hindi na mapapansin. Kawawa naman ang ating mga niluno ang nagbuwis ng buhay, dahil pangalan ng alamang ang mga iba't mamana na, na, na pwede natin pahalagahan sa kanila. Pero ang kanilang ginawa ay hindi matatawaran. No? Uh, dito po sa Kapito, maraming uh, may mga historia. No? Uh, ang mga ano, ang mga marker natin. No? Meron tayong, uh, ano, no, siyempre, yung sa Pagay. Sampai kaya kaya, meron din. Pakitipan na ang patagun. Sino lolo mo dyan? Sa museo ng Parkhurst. Anong pangalan? Amaita Salvador. Amaita Salvador. From Patungan, ano? Ano mo, mga wall. Wall of Remembrance Day. Ano masasabi mo sa paglalagay ng ganyan? Ang city na naging sentro ng mga panunod. Okay. Okay. Proud po. Proud. Kasi upo, ano? Salamat po tayo dahil dito sa Paragundol ay pinapahalagahan ang mga uh, ginawa ng ating mga minuno sa mga maghita ng markers. More than that po, no, uh, noong 2017, kundi ang nagkakamali, ay na-install itong Liberators Guerrilla na noong una ay hindi pa nga kasa, dahil nakasama sa roster no? at uh, hindi pa nakilala. Yung pala, napakalaki ng uh, gampanin. Pasalamat po kay uh, Mama Marie Vallejo sapagkat nung uh, nakita nila ito mga dokumento na ito, ay binigyan nila ng kopya ang Historical Commission. Actually po, ang Cavite Study Center ay i-record na po. Ang kapal po ng dokumento, dami, no? At uh, sabi namin sa De La Salle, sa Cavite Study Center, ay uh, kinakailangan ma-publish yung mga ganyang klase ng mga primary source para malaman natin ang ang mga ang kasaysayan natin na na pinagbuwisan talaga ng buhay. Alam naman natin 'yon, no? Sabi nga natin sa Himagsikan, eh, napakayaman ng Cavite pero parang malayo na, hindi ka na makarelate, no? Ah, uh, ilan na lamang 'yung mga descendants na nakarelate. Pero pagdating sa World War II, ang dami pang nakaka-relate dahil marami pa pong mga apo at mga anak na buhay pa sa kasalukuyan. Even, no, 'yung iba nga uh, 100 years na nabubuhay na, no? So, yun po yung mga bagay-bagay siguro na dapat nating tingnan sa panahon ngayon lalo na ang Cavite po ay dumaranas ng matinding modernisasyon ako po ay tiga Dasparinas no? uh, alam niyo naman ang Dasparinas ngayon no? wala ka na rin makita na lupa siguro dun sa sentro no? hindi ka tulad dito, ang dami pang mga puno no? ang, uh, kaya nga meron tinatawag na bagong bayan at lumang bayan. Yung, bayan, da, yung lumang bayan, inaalis na yung munisipyo doon kasi congested na. Gumagawa na ng bagong bayan. So merong bagong bayan, merong lumang bayan. No? Uh, dito po sa Paragon doon, ay mapalad po tayo dahil uh, uh, kitang-kita pa rin natin yung dating landscape. No? At uh, palagahan, palagahan po natin yan na hindi basta-basta maapektuhan ng modernization urbanization at industrialization no? at uh, yan po ay malaking bagay para isalamin ang ating identity bilang tiga mga margondon at bilang mga kabitenyo muli po maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayong lahat maraming maraming salamat po Commissioner Emmanuel F. Calairo mula sa National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Ang susunod naman po na magbibigay ng mensahe, while she worked for the Internet Corporation of the United States of America, researched her Philippine World War II history, she wrote the Battle of the Sing, book about the guerrillas 130th Infantry Regiment in the Liberation of Mindanao, Maragundon, isang masigabong palakpakan kay Miss Marie Silva Valle.
morning, everyone. Good morning. First of all, I want to apologize. Um, I don't speak my other very well. I'll be speaking in English, so but I will try to be as slow as possible. Okay. First of all, I want to thank Mayor Reynaldo Rillo, members of the local government, and Mr. Reagan Gulapa for inviting me to the unveiling of the Liberator's Guerrilla Wall of Remembrance and inauguration of the Histocultural Mural. Before the Americans' forces returned to the Philippines, they already knew much of the locations and strengths of the Japanese, thanks to the guerrillas who were sending the information to General MacArthur's headquarters in Australia. When they landed the American forces in the different islands, there were hardly any major opposition, thanks again to the guerrillas. The guerrillas had destroyed the enemy whom they had been watching for the last three years. Because of their persistent resistance, many Filipino and American lives were saved at the landings when the Americans came. Now, after the surrender in 1942, many soldiers hid, joined the guerrillas, or formed, or formed their own guerrilla units. General MacArthur was ordered by the President of the United States to leave for Australia, to lead a force that they were building to attack Japan. He wanted to come back, but he had no idea what was happening in the Philippines. Several months after the Bataan surrender, General Guillermo Nacar on Luzon was the first to find a radio and contact Australia until his capture about three months later. That was the first glimmer of hope that General MacArthur needed to plan his return. Then Panay and Mindanao contacted Australia. MacArthur did not want to lose the contact. He wanted to know more what was happening here. He wanted to coordinate with the guerrillas to plan for a successful return. The guerrillas, in turn, they wanted weapons and ammunition from him to fight the Japanese. Now the guerrillas who were they, they were former Yusake men who did not surrender and they were civilians who wanted the invaders to leave their country. Military ranks or professions before the war, they did not matter. Everybody just wanted to fight the enemy. Many times they also fought with each other because they had to survive. But each one did their own share in resisting the enemy. General MacArthur did not want to lose the contact. So for the next three years before his return, he sent submarine missions with Filipinos operators and infantry soldiers with radios to the major islands to set up networks that would connect them to send information on the Japanese. These Filipino mission men had volunteered. They were coming from the United States into Australia to board submarines to come to the Philippines. They wanted to return and fight for their motherland, the homeland that they left many, many decades ago. The submarines landed in Mindanao Negros, Panay, Mindoro, Cebu, Samar, and finally Leyte and Luzon. The leader of the submarine missions had a difficult job to find the right guerrilla leader to unify his island and receive the supplies from Australia. The Central Islands, the Visayan Islands, and Mindanao each had one guerrilla leader who was strong enough to unify his island. But Luzon could not unify under one leader. 
several strong guerrilla leaders commanded their sectors. Your father or Lolos may have joined these men's organizations to fight or provide any form of support to fight the enemy. Now the submarines, they brought weapons, ammunition, medicine, supplies, and propaganda materials to the guerrillas in each island. On board the submarines were mostly Filipino radio operators. There were weather observers and aircraft watchers with a few American personnel. Aside from the weapons, the submarines brought the very important radios. The Filipino radio operators, they set up radio outposts to form networks that allowed the guerrilla units to communicate with each other in their own islands. Negros was the first landing, six months after Bataan surrendered, followed by landings in the Visayas, Mindanao up to Mindoro. The directive to the guerrillas was to lie low and just gather intelligence on the Japanese to send back through the radios until the return of the U.S. forces. This was to prevent the Japanese from punishing the civilians. But the guerrillas continued anyway. <laughs> Their hit and run and ambuscades against the Japanese patrols to keep the support of the civilians. They needed the support of the civilians for their food and shelter at times. Now the guerrillas and civilians, they risked their lives gathering the information to send back. In Luzon, the submarines bringing radios and weapons began arriving only three months before the late landing. So, so the messengers would carry the information to the radio stations in the Visayas that already had established radio networks. That took weeks over land and crossing the seas separating Luzon from the southern islands. In July of 1944, the U.S. decided on bypassing the Philippines and send their forces straight to Formosa, now Taiwan. We would have been bypassed. But General MacArthur with his forces, they were on the way to the Philippines when he was told of that decision. At a meeting in Hawaii, the strong resistance movement in the Philippines it gave him the confidence to convince the U.S. President to not bypass the Philippines. The powerful support of a guerrilla movement were his eyes and ears in the islands. He spoke of the guerrillas who had been fighting for the last two years, waiting for the aid to return, and that the people would suffer under Japan's revenge. Two months later, the U.S. Air Force sent bombing raids to the islands, this time around September, August-September, signaling the beginning of the return. No Japanese aircrafts flew from Leyte to meet the bombers. Another crucial decision was made to change the landing date, the landing site to Leyte and in October. The original landing site was to be in Mindanao and in December. With a new landing date in Leyte, five submarine missions landed in Dibot Bay, Infanta, Bangui Bay, and Darigagos Cove in the three months before the October landing in Leyte. Some of the submarine landings were suicidal because there was no friendly guerrillas to meet the submarines or anybody to meet the, the Filipinos who were arriving with their, with their supplies and radios. So the radio operators, they set up the radios and they joined the guerrillas in central Luzon to communicate with each other. The areas of Rizal outside Manila, the mountains of Cavite, overlooking the Manila Bay, and nearby Nasubo, they were filled and heavy with Japanese troops, and they had to watch and monitor them. 
When the news flashed of the U.S. forces arriving, there was rejoicing at the orders to openly attack the enemy. More than 120 radio stations with guerrilla operators trained by the Filipino radio operators were operating 24 hours daily feeding intelligence to the U.S. forces. On Luzon, the networks covered the provinces of the Lingayen Landing site down to the central area of the island on both sides of the coast and around Manila. The networks connected with radio stations in Camarines Sur, the islands of Lubang and Maricaban, and southern Luzon, watch, watching the backside of Manila. So the guerrillas rose and ferociously fought, ambushed the enemy garrisons, and they set up roadblocks, roadblocks trapping the enemy. Messengers were sent out to the people and remote locations to attack the enemy with whatever weapons they had. Many of the guerrilla units and people were armed only with bolos, and they began to strike back. The submarines brought hundreds of rifles and machine guns but they were never enough for the thousands of guerrillas in the Philippines. After the war, a guerrilla in northern Luzon said in an interview that they had no arms. Some had bolos. No bar, or they call it browning automatic rifles. But they had rebar. You know what rebar is? On the buildings. That's what they use to kill. In northern Luzon, the guerrilla infantry regiment's strength increased to around 20,000 men. That is over one-third the size of a regular U.S. infantry division. In the hunt for General Yamashita, they fought and died with the American units along the trails of Besang Pass, Balete Pass, and the Villa Verde Trail. The guerrillas had 121st Infantry Regiment. There were less than 3,000 men, but they fought around 45,000 Japanese troops at Besang Pass for three months. They saw General Yamashita emerge from his hideout in Hangduan, holding a white cloth to surrender. In his memoir, General Kruger the commanding general of the 6th Army described the Battle of Besang Pass as one whose magnitude and decisiveness far surpasses the U.S. Army's 32nd and 25th Divisions battle for the Villa Verde Trail and the Balete Pass, respectively. General MacArthur commended the men and said, the work of the Northern Luzon guerrillas alone was equal to a frontline U.S. division. General Yamashita's chief of staff, General Akira Muto, observed that the Philippines was the only conquered nation in Southeast Asia that fiercely resisted the Japanese. Another Japanese officer said that it is impossible to fight the U.S. forces, their enemy, and at the same time suppress the activities of the guerrillas. The Japanese acknowledged that the guerrillas were difficult to defeat. During the war, it was difficult to keep a record of the men in a guerrilla unit. Men joined different groups depending on their location and loyalty. Officers were afraid to write down names in a roster because if found by the enemy, that meant death. Also, paper was scarce. They were writing on toilet paper, on carton, on um, a children's uh, papers, lined papers, the back of government uh, forms. That's what they were using. And that's what we found in the archives of the U.S. National Archives. Um, rosters. Okay, many rosters that were also buried, they were eaten by termites, and we saw this, these rosters, they were eaten by termites, or they rotted. 
Luzon had many guerrilla leaders, unlike the southern islands, that had one guerrilla commander that kept the rosters and history of the unit. But the men knew that they fought the enemy and can tell the story. After the war, the U.S. Army conducted a guerrilla recognition program for several years to give death benefits, payments for services, education, and other benefits to those who fought during the return of the U.S. forces. The guerrillas had to submit the list of men and history of their unit as proof. Commanding officers, civilians in their area, and other forms of verifications were done to confirm their activities. Not all guerrilla units were able to submit by the deadline, especially those from the southern islands. Many commanding officers were unable to submit rosters. They had moved on. Officers who could verify the rosters had died. Some just did not want to relive the war and wanted to forget. But the problem enabled the gathering of the stories, history of the units, and rosters of the men who were with the U.S. forces. The records were proof of the guerrillas' significant contribution to the liberation of their country. In ending my talk, the guerrilla recognition files are in the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, PIVAO's website. You can access it, it's free. Look, you might find your father or Lolo's name and the story of his unit, especially if he did not want to talk about the war, and many did not. That's where Reagan Gulapa found proof of the stories he heard as a boy about his grandfather, Patrocinio Gulapa, and the Liberators. So, I thank you for allowing me to share with you the guerrillas' significant contributions to the liberation of their country, the Philippines. Thank you, Mabuhay. Thank you so much, Ms. Marie Silva Valleo, for giving us a glimpse of history, a detailed account of events of the guerrillas' contribution during the World War II. Okay, so for now, a song number will be given to us by Ms. Christine Joy Pareja. Nais kong mabuhay muli Kapag may pagka 
Thank you so much, Miss Christine Joy Pareja, for that song number. So, ngayon po, we will give a token of appreciation to Dr. Emmanuel F. Calairo and Miss Maricilva Vallejo. These are from Likhang Maragandan, ma'am. Mayor, please do the honors. Dr. Calairo and ma'am, pwede naman po dito sa may marker. Dr. Kalayra po. Thank you so much for gracing today's occasion and for helping the, the municipal government of Baragodon. Thank you rin po kay Ma'am Marie Silva Vallejo na isa sa naging susi para po sa pananaliksik patungkol po sa liberators during the ng Maragondon. Kung hindi po dahil sa mga pagsusundikap nyo, wala po tayo ngayong araw na to. Wala po itong wall of remembrance in honor of the intrepid men and women na nag-lurture na, po yung contribution sa ating Philippine history. So for now, may we call on the honor of all Alexander Villanueva to give his closing remarks. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat na po. Uh, kung di po ito magaganap, kung di po dahil kay Consul Reagan. At uh, po, siyempre, na-program po ni Mayor. Nung unang term po namin ni Reagan, kasama ko kami, napakusapan po namin ito. Kasi po ako, anak po ako na US veterans po. Wala po yung tatay ko. Pero ang tatay ko po, ang pinakamarami napakay na hapon. Alam niyo po kung bakit? Nakarating na ngayon ng corridor. Kwento lang po ang tena po. Kasi po yung meron po doon ang kanyo na nataas. Yun yung bago sila sumuko kasi pinutol yung tubig doon sa... Anong Regan? Anong... Sa Regan? Kabalyo. Kabalyo. Kasi doon po nang gagaling ang tubig na corridor. Kaya po sumuko ang corridor. Sabi yung tatay ko, pinutol yung tubig doon ng mga pon. Po. Kaya po ang tatay ko, pinakamarami na pati na pon. Siya po <laughs> napapaputok ng kanyo. Pati po yung bahay nila dyan sa, sa amin doon. Sa Tibo Eskwelan dito, tinamaan doon nila. Sige po yun, marami hapon. Ano po? Pag po kayo nakating naman po ng corridor, may libingan po ng mga hapon at saka US. Pa paano, paano nila naalaman nyo kung bakit hapon yung lugar na yun ang libingan at saka US? Kasi po, nung hinuhukay nila yung mga buto, nakalagay po doon sa buto ng mga hapon, may pindapan. Yung po sa ano, may di US. Yung po, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Maraming salamat po sa pagdalo. Ano po? Kung di po kayo, wala kayo dito, hindi po masaya tayo. Ano po? Maraming salamat. Maraming maraming salamat po, Consilal Alex Villanueva. So, dito po natatapos ang ating seremonya para sa araw na ito. Feel free to take photos para dito po sa Wall of Remembrance. Hanapin niyo po, nandyan po ang pangalan ng inyong magigiting na kamaganap. Muli isang magandang umaga at mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat. Once again, thank you, Commissioner Dr. Emmanuel F. Calairo from the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Our deepest thanks to Ms. 
Marisila Vallejo for joining us today, ma'am. Maraming maraming salamat po sa oras. Maari po ba mag-stay tayo for a while? Medyo na-delay lang po ng konti yung pagkain kasi we're not expecting na matatapos po tayo ng ganito kabilis pero may pagkain po kasi kami inalat sa lahat ng descendants ng ating Liberators Guerrilla. So, if you may permit, please give us enough time. Hintay na lang po. Aris may na naman po yung delivery. Uh, pasensya na po talaga hindi po namin na expect na magiging mabilis po ang programa. So, <laughs> Ah, wala ko pala po kayo pagkain. Oh, sige na po. Eh. Okay, sige. Okay, sige. Okay, sige. Eh. Hindi po ba? So, on our review, listen. Our leaders, ako pag hindi ako pumunta, pagalitan mo. Siyempre. Okay, message mo pa ako. Pinasensya. Nakapasok ka ba? Dalawang ilagat. Ano nga sabi mo kung siya? Saan ba? Ayos. Made in Japan. Made in Japan. Hindi makakalimutan. Made in Japan. Ikaw. Made in Japan. Made in Japan. Ano mo sasabihin niyo sa Ano na? Ano mo sasabihin niyo sa Wall of Remembrance? Ah, okay na wala. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ano ang masasabi niya sa Wall of Remembrance? Good job! Good job! Good okay. job! Ang dami ko naman dyan! Good job! Ang galing-galing na nagay ko. Ikaw ang number one dyan ah! Kaya nang dinamit nakita pa? O dyan na lang. Ayaw mo doon eh. Dyan na lang. Sige po ka tayo ka lang dyan. Ano ang sabi niya sa Wall of Remembrance? Masaya. At least in honor yung kabayan niya. Ano ma'am? Ano pa ba sabi niya sa unveiling? Can we have a picture please? Can we have a picture please?